All right, so we are under uh, the Genii Bootcamp Wiki on the left-hand side under projects, and we're looking at the Japanese sentence constructor. And this project is going to be level 100, so we're going to walk through this document so that we are prepared for what we are going to do next, which is actual implementation. So this is level 100. This means that it's for beginners. The reason I mark it as beginners is because there is no programming involved. We're 100% using AI-powered assistance and writing natural language as we would to get a agent to do what we want it to do. Um, the goal of this here is we are building a chat agent that acts as a teaching assistant uh, at, to guide students from translating a target English sentence to Japanese. Uh, the teaching assistant is, is not there to provide the direct answer, but only guidance. Okay, so that is what we want it to achieve. Now let's talk about technical uncertainty. So whenever we're working on a project, we should be thinking about what the technical uncertainty is, and we want to be able to provide an explanation at the end of the time that we put into the project. This is what you should be documenting. Um, and yours is gonna look different from other folks because you're gonna be using different types of technology on different hardware or different approaches. And so the, inf the information that, uh, that is the outcome there is gonna be different. Think of this as research and development. You are researching as you develop things and then you're documenting those answers. So here I've written uh, what I would like you to expand upon. You might add your own here as well, but let's go read through them. So first is, how well can an AI-powered system perform a very broad task? So these AI-powered systems, they can do basically everything. But the question is, is to, uh, uh, to, to what point does this thing break down or what is its boundaries of what it can do? And um, so that follows up to the next question is, would a very broad task be better performed by dividing it into subtasks with specialized agents? So we're building a Japanese sentence constructor. We're basically building a Japanese teaching assistant so that when you are not with your main teacher, you have something else that you can practice with. Um, but you, uh, we know LLMs, uh, the, the, larger, uh, the larger the task, the harder, the harder it can be for them to perform. And so uh, I'm assuming that we're gonna see parts where we're gonna go, oh, maybe this should be a smaller task, or we could have taken this agent and turned it into three, four agents, right? Uh, does using an AI Power Assistant make for a good place to, rapid, uh, to rapidly prototype agents? So um, I guess the question that I'm trying to ask there, and maybe this should be numbered, so it's a little bit easier for us to follow along here. I'm gonna switch this over to numbers. So we're right now on number three. But, um, you know, the thing is, is that these AI Power Assistants, uh, they're not just vanilla large language models. They're not a single model. Uh, they have a bunch of orchestration underneath. And so if you build something there, can you take what you built and replicate it somewhere else in the case that uh, your organization wants to do direct integration, which is the next question. How could we take the agent we built in an AI power system and re-implement it into a stack that allows for direct integration? You'll notice that sometimes um, uh, the way I'm wording these questions are very similar, but I think that by having questions that are worded similarly, you get uh, sometimes a different result. And so I will ask a question in multiple ways in different ways um, as a CTO to try to uh, make sure that I'm really getting uh, a, a good answer back. Um, so we have that. So how much do we have to rework our prompt documents from uh, one AI power system to another? So imagine we were working with uh, Anthropic Cloud and then we decide, oh, my company doesn't want to pay for Anthropic Cloud, it's too expensive. Now we're gonna move over to um, uh, OpenAI or maybe we're afraid that down the road that they're gonna increase the price because OpenAI said they're going to do that. How can we take this somewhere else, right? And so that might be something we, want, we might want to evaluate. What prompting te techniques can we naturally discover, uh, discover working in the confines of an AI power assistant? So, you know, when we say prompting techniques or prompt engineering, there is a lot of stuff out there. Uh, a lot of prompt engineering, should say a lot, but there are techniques that only work when you have um, the ability to uh, 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 orchestrate uh, your LLM with other tools, but we are in the confines of putting just text in a box. And so there's gonna be prompting techniques that we can't do. And I'll, and what you find out as you work with prompt engineering is that there's just things that you naturally do and you kind of figure out, you figure out the meta that kind of works for you. And so that's what I'm saying is just use it naturally without having to do a ton of research on prompt engineering. If there are techniques that I know of, then I will, uh, I will call them out. Um, and if you do wanna do research, you absolutely can, specifically for AI powered assistance, but it's not really complicated, basically, you know, think about giving instructions to a, a person that doesn't perform well. You can basically iteratively figure it out as we work through this, okay? But documenting what those things that you did 
is very useful because you might uh, discover some type of technique that no one's ever tried before and you're getting good results. This is how this stuff works. You just try and you measure the result and you know you pass that knowledge on. So we have that. Um, are there any interesting innovations unique to specific AI power systems for our business goal? So the thing is, is that these AI power systems, they're all trying to build their own moat, right? So if I use OpenAI, it actually has a voice feature that works really, really well. It's a voice to voice model. Uh, or if you're on Anthropic Cloud, it has projects where it's very easy to upload knowledge bases. All of these things have additional functionality that could be leveraged for our solution if we cho uh, choose to do so. Really, the reason we're evaluating this is that we're asking, um, and maybe it's not super clear, but uh, like maybe at an even more higher level, we're saying, you know, uh, will uh, will AI powered assistance uh, assistance replace real teachers? Right. That's really what we're trying to get at here. And so, you know, if there are additional features that uh, we might want to explore and with a specific one and, and see how far uh, we can get with some of these tools, that's what we want to figure out here. Uh, what were we able to achieve based on the AI power assistance choice and our hardware or budget limitations? You watching this course, you're going to be using something different than me. So I can pay for a lot of these services. Um, you might not be able to, you might not have access to certain ones. You might have a preference to only work with open source models. You might have a really powerful machine and you don't want to pay $20 to one of these, uh, these things, or you're just trying to use the free tier of any cloud service and doing the best that you can. So my point is, is that we're all going to be using the different stuff and do the best that you can do with the tools you have and report back. If all you can utilize is the free tiers of these things and it's very limited and it's not a very powerful model, that's fine. It's the information you come back with that's important. It's not whether you achieve the result. It's like if all you can use is GPT-40 Mini uh, and you don't have the GPT-40 One reasoning, uh, you know, the more expensive one that's paid, or you're using Gemini 1.5 Flash, the free one, then the information you come back is still valuable. It's just that, uh, you know, the result might not be great. It might be obvious like, oh, yes, I can't do much with a free model with these ones. Um, I did list out here Olama plus uh, web UI. Now, technically, this isn't an AI powered assistant. What this is, is it's giving you a web UI for single downloadable models. Um, whereas these ones are, are more complex, but like if you have a machine, like let's say you have a Mac M1, you download Olama, you run web UI, which we actually show you how to do in the Gen AI Essentials course, maybe that's what you're gonna use. Right, because you can't afford these other ones. Do whatever you can. Maybe you try a Libra Chat. Libra Chat is similar to Web UI, but it is a platform that's online. And uh, what it will allow you to do is just plug into anything. So it has a bunch of different models here. And so maybe this actually would be a good way to evaluate multiple models at the same time. But these are not the same thing as the AI powered assistants, right? These are using the open, the open source models, and there's not stuff wrapped around it. So, you know, I put asterisks on these because they're technically not AI powered assistants, but if for whatever reason, this is what you're limited to, because for whatever reason, or it's your personal choice, then I'm gonna understand that that's gonna be acceptable. There's one also called Leon. I didn't fully get it to work just yet. I have to play around a little bit more with it, but this one supposedly promises that it's an open source personal assistant and you can plug a bunch of stuff into it. And one really cool thing that I saw here is that it had a GitPod button. I could not believe that it could run on Gitpod, but I was trying to install it. It was taking too long to install, but I might come back to this and evaluate it. And so this one is supposedly is an open source one. So when I provide this list to you, I'm gonna say, uh, must be used. I'm gonna say examples, e.g., but it has to be an AI powered assistant, all right? So hopefully you understand AI powered assistant is something that's online. You're not adjusting top P, top K. Uh, you're not doing anything programmatic. It's just whatever you can put in a box, and any WYSIWYG features that they have, that's what you're gonna utilize, okay? Uh, normally I'd like to do an architectural diagram and actually provide even more detailed information about what we're building. But the problem is, is that if I start writing here, I'm writing the prompt document. And that's not a bad thing, but the, the thing is, is that I wanna go through this with you and, ex and make it exploratory as if we're doing it for the first time. Now I've obviously built this before over multiple months. Uh, and I found some really interesting uh, things. But just understand that this document here is a bit lightweight. Uh, normally I would have more information as exactly what we wanted to achieve and also an architectural diagram. But it's so simple, there's no need for an architectural diagram and I cannot provide those details of exactly what we wanted to do. We will work our way through it. Um, and also just because you might not know the Japanese language and so 
I want to talk about those points as we build it. So hopefully that is a good introduction. And in the next video, we will jump into implementation, okay?